My favorite memory of my son Trey was when he was a toddler learning to count. He said, Mommy, I can count to two. I was a little surprised because I hadn't taught him to count objects yet. So he grabs two pennies, lines them up on the table next to one another, puts his finger on the first penny, and he says, two. And before I could correct him, he slides his little finger over to the second penny and says, of them. <laughs> I was so caught off guard, I had to stop myself from laughing just so that I could celebrate him for counting to two. Two of them. Trey was just that kid. Everybody loved Trey. He was my only child that I had to um, host double birthday parties for because adults without children would RSVP just to celebrate Trey. Trey was... Trey Alexander Howard was murdered in 2013 due to gun violence, a night that has become a recurring nightmare. December 18th, 2013, at approximately 11.25 p.m., the night Trey was murdered, I released the most gut-wrenching, spine-curdling, soul-shaking scream from the depths of my being. From that moment, my life has changed in ways I never could have imagined. Some days are great. Many days remain a struggle. But every day, that scream stays right here, waiting to be released. But I won't. Every day I wish I could just go back and force him to come home to family dinner instead of hanging out with his friends. You see, on December 18th at approximately 11.25 p.m., the night Trey was murdered, I was instantly thrust into a club of mothers I so desperately wish I could resign from. You know, the I'm a black mother whose son was murdered, villainized by the news. And whose life has no value club. And you see, in moments like this, when I'd rather just fall just a bit and hold on to community just a bit and release that scream, I won't because I can't. Even on the worst day of my life, as I lay there in that bed in shock, Person after person came running through the door, and I was hoping somehow that Trey would be one of them. But they knelt about down by my bed, and they tried to encourage me and telling me, you're strong, you're going to get through this. Or if anybody can handle this, it's you. The weight of those words were like a hug engulfing me and squeezing me too tight, leaving me gasping for air. They hurt and they were damaging me, but still they kept coming. Be strong. I truly believed that this time being strong was going to kill me. And for the first time in my life, I realized that my strength was toxic. 
Toxic strength is the idea that people of a certain ethnic background or with a history of hardships can endure an incredible amount of difficulties. Toxic strength is the belief that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Believe me, it doesn't. Toxic strength is being told that you're a strong black woman and that strength does not give you permission to be soft or to be needy or to be held. Toxic strength is being knocked down over and 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 over again and never giving yourself permission to just stay down for a while. Stay down and give yourself permission to release those screams. Refuse to claim toxic strength. When I think about falling, it's often the ability to release the fall that we are able to powerfully stand. There's a Japanese concept, wabi-sabi, that I often use to describe my now version of strength. Wabi-sabi takes imperfect and broken things and create beauty. I was first introduced to wabi-sabi when I was presenting to a group of non-English speakers. My co-presenter and I took the best of all available elements and curated the most incredible experience that changed lives for the better. When I think of my life, I often think of a broken pot of clay. Each piece represents a different piece of my life. Separately, they don't have much value, but gluing them together with intention and love creates the opportunity for me to be imperfectly perfect and whole. And we all deserve to be whole. Men, women, all women. Yes, black women too, especially black women. Ain't I a woman? I can't heal without you. After Trey's death, I didn't know what healing looked like. And it's in the shared effort of support that we have the opportunity to create wholeness and wellness. Ubuntu is a South African term often defined as I am because we are. Do you remember the childhood game, Mother May I, where the objective is to ask mother, may I take one step forward? To which the mother replies, yes, you may. The next time you encounter a woman who has experienced the trauma of losing a child, instead of forcing her to display toxic strength, Ask her, mother, may I hold you while you cry ugly tears? Mother, may I wait with you for as long as it takes? Mother, may I hold your hand as you courageously take the first step forward? To which the mother will reply, yes, you may, and together we become strong and move forward. Finally, the true image of support is changing your perception of perfection. As the news reports yet another black child being murdered, you'll find a mother and a father 
hurt, lost, confused, afraid, angry. They're often still fighting for justice. They are often still fighting for something to just make sense. They are often still fighting for their own lives. In many ways, it's better for for them, for me, for us to just hold on to our pain and yours because it's better for all of us. The truth is, as my unique and daunting club of mothers return to our everyday lives, we need you to do better. We need you to be there for us. We need you to hold us while we fall. We need you to stop forcing us to display toxic strength as your example. You know, I'm a mother who sleeps with the light on as if never experiencing night again could protect me from the ceaseless pain of Trey's murder. I've survived breast cancer. I've even survived the horror, the terror of witnessing my mother murdered in front of me. And being strong wore a badge. I gladly give it back. So I'm asking you, no, village, I need you to do better. I need you to hold us. I need you to stop looking at what society says about black women's resilience. They've taught you that it's strength. Well, I'm teaching you that it's superficial and it's toxic. So stop it. Strength, true strength, is a shared effort. We have an opportunity to stand, rise together, and march forth. Thank you.